sort of shifted, we sort of set that aside, but I do agree with Tim, that was really the goal and might need to be for the seamlessness of the process over time to look towards that as a goal. Keeping the same benefits, if you will, that you have when you work into retirement is a great goal. How do we get there? And I think that that's the challenge we're facing. So we, we never were able to really bridge that hurdle because it took so much time to get information, discuss information, that that really never occurred. So uh, the changes, as Dennis alluded to, sat there for a while and were really put aside because there wasn't any real concrete way and there was no agreement about how to go forward. I think what Sue is talking about as a possible, possible interim might be something that we should be considering because for, there's been a long-standing issue and I think a clear and, and, and accurate one of inequity that uh, older retirees have to pay for their Medicare B, which is always increasing, and that is a condition of them receiving benefits. So they're out of pocket that 120, or I think you just said now it's, it's 130. So they have to pay 130 for a health benefit. It means Medicare, and it also means what becomes for them a supplemental plan. So for the same benefits, more or less, that a, that a younger retiree gets for free. That doesn't seem fair for someone that is, is elderly, having more financial challenges. So that was one of the discussions that I think there was pretty good agreement on. Gee, that just isn't fair. So what Sue is talking about, and we discussed very briefly with the CEO, we weren't there to meet with the CEO and negotiate any kind of thing. That wouldn't have been our role. But we did throw out a number of options. And, you know, no one wants to pay it. You know, money is, is tight for everyone, but I think that if we were able to, we don't need, I think, a lot of data on that one. We don't need to compare pl plans and programs because we're not changing anyone. That would be a sheer, simple calculation that I think Sue either has or roughly has, which is that you would multiply the number of retirees under the Medicare age, assign a fee to it, and multiply it, and that's hundreds of thousands of dollars that could have, in, in this case, bridged the gap between what, where we're short this year. So it's a, it's a way to attempt and, be, and, and cap the costs, and it could get the discussion off the ground that healthcare costs are rising, and we all are gonna need to take a more careful look at who's paying for those costs, what is fair, and what is fair for the system overall and over time. And probably changes are gonna be, need, need to be made. It's clear that the fees are gonna to have to go up. The $500 is not gonna be enough to cover each retiree per month, as has been charged for uh, in the last three or four years. So that clearly is gonna to have to go up. So this would be one step, and I think it's something absent uh, detailed information to make a more comprehensive change to the system that we ought to consider doing. And, and, I, and I think it's an equitable one with respect to who's getting what benefit and who's paying for what. And we could roll that out and get that done in, in short amount of time. Uh, we don't really need uh, a lot of data from Mercer to put that into place. But I don't think also that we should then start dragging our feet and saying we've made a change and just set it aside. I think we need to be just as vigilant going forward. So I would support doing that if we can't get something going in the near future. Is there a motion? Well, I mean, I would make it a motion unless I'd like to discuss it a little more here for some other of the members of the board. That if, if, because Tim had made some, I think, some good points. If there's any way that we think we're going to get any momentum going, and we can do that, you know, um, we could wait till our August meeting to do that if we don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I would sort of throw that out for discussion. I, I, I think I would support it. I haven't heard any information that would cause me to not support it. Um, I, I don't, even if we make other changes with the healthcare system later, that one in place is I think a fair, you know, you just go forward and if you have to adjust costs in other ways, you do. And, and so I don't think we've made any mistake didn't by doing that. We, didn't we just discuss this like about nine, ten months ago? Raising it, that's why I relented and we had said yeah. we're not going to do anything. This is the same exact discussion. We're right back where we were. We're right back to yeah. where we were before. Yeah. This is where we were last September and October. Yeah. But look, I remember just one comment to the supervisor, and that is that the part that you've missed is that when you talk about equity, everyone who retires doesn't have the same benefits at retirement age. Sure. And so that you can't just say, we'll just apply through numbers what each person is going to be responsible for unless you also count in what they basically are receiving in the way of pension. If you take $100 out of a lot of people that have been retired, that's an awful lot of money. 
You know, I, I can agree, I can agree with that, but what happens when they turn 65 and take, get on Medicare? Now they've got that $130 a month that has to And their Social Security. But it's let me say, out. I, I totally that totally You don't do Part B. I totally and agree with what you're Security. saying. So, and if, I mean, if we had it my way, come. we would shape, we would do uh, uh, on an ability to pay. We would have, you would get lower, care, lower paid retirees, would get free medical, and you would tier it. And you would get it. It's probably not legal, and I would never get the political support to pass that. But I will tell you, I would support that. I would support having it be tiered. Why should someone that gets six or eight thousand dollars a month in retirement get free medical, whereas someone that gets nine hundred and twenty-two dollars not? So people do. People do. Yeah. They do. Well, I retired. So, I retired early. I'm just saying, so I'm, I'm saying that I agree with you, but, but unfortunately the politics are such that that's never going to, that's never really going to be half, it's never going to happen, so. I, I retired early, so a lot of us that are under, under 65, we don't get the premium of when if we worked till 65 or 62, and yes, I elected to retire early, but I had six wonderful years with my father before he passed away. So that's mine. And I, it's going to be really hard for me because I didn't make the wage like a lot of you guys did. Yeah. Okay? So it's really going to put a, a financial pinch on me. Very much. I'm going to have to go back to work. Because I don't use the medical like a lot of the 65 years or older. That's another thing that's considered. We don't use the percentage as much. The people under 65 cost the plan more than the people over 65. That's an actuarial fact. I'm sorry. Way more. Way more. Yeah, but we just wow. before we turn 65, then the increased amount of income comes in. No, no, I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying right. from an actuarial standpoint, it's more expensive for the people under 65 on the plan than it is for people over 65. The simple fact is, is because Medicare picks up a big right. portion of it. So that makes the people under 65 a larger, a larger uh, amount of the cost. That's the fact. And that's why we're trying to work something out more equitable. But your first statement was contrary to that. I understood your first statement was saying once you get to be 65 and you're on Medicare, then you can afford it. No, I didn't say you can afford it. You're going to get that cost. You're going to get that 130 no matter whether you can afford it or not. If you want A and B, and if you want the county's retirement health plan, you have to get B. So you're going to have to pay that 130 when you get 65, whether you want to or not. doesn't mean you can afford it. That's not what I was implying. I'm sorry about that. But you're going to have to pay that anyway. I mean, it's... I wish it was a more equitable way to do that. We're not... The, I would say, to be, I don't know the, all the ones that have using it, because there are some people that you know get a million dollars in, in, well, in but medical. You, but you have to look. At, you have to look at what insurance is, and it's a law of large numbers. Yeah. So I mean, you throw a whole bunch of money in the pool, and sure, there's people who are going to take a lot more money out of the pool, and some are going to never take any money out of the pool. But that's uh, that's what insurance is, uh, and it's not equitable in all ways. <laughs> let, let me just attempt to kind of.